So hello everyone and welcome to eCampus Ontario's webinar on adaptive learning and entry point integrating adaptive into your curriculum. My name is Don Eldridge and I am a digital learning associate on the programs and services team at eCampus Ontario, where I work primarily on the adaptive learning portfolio. It gives me great pleasure to be moderating today's webinar and to introduce our main presenters. So joining us today is Rick Byers, who is a professor at both Condestoga College and Fanshawe College, where for the past five years, he has both facilitated courses and worked in curriculum development. Prior to his work in community colleges, Rick spent approximately 20 years in corporate training and development with various organizations and leadership positions. Rick has worked with both large and small organizations, including Sears Canada, Best Buy, and Staples Business Depot. In describing his approach to curriculum and facilitation, Rick emphasizes the importance of learners enjoying the content, using a variety of assigned work linked to learning outcomes, and application of course content to real world scenarios. Rick holds a BA in psychology with a minor in human resources and graduate work in behavioral neuroscience both with the University of Waterloo. In addition to this, I got to mention, it was just mentioned to me at the start of today's webinar, Rick has also been a subject matter expert and instrumental in helping Amitros uh, create some of the products that are featured. So uh, really fantastic to see those kinds of collaborations with the sector. Also joining us today is Kathy Piller, who is the co-founder and chief executive officer of Amitros Learning, a Toronto-based education technology company that helps students and professionals transition knowledge into practical skills through AI powered practice based learning that replicates real life working workplace scenarios. Kathy is a passionate market builder skilled in strategic planning and marketing with extensive experience in brand building, marketing communications, product segment and channel marketing. Prior to co-founding Amitros, Kathy worked for more than 30 years in the technology industry, including 11 years with BlackBerry, where she held the position of Senior Vice President Global Channel Marketing. In this role, she was responsible for launching dozens of products and services in hundreds of countries, greatly contributing to the exponential international growth of the organization. Kathy is an avid speaker, coach and mentor, supporting colleagues, clients and partners with her extensive experience and insight. Kathy holds an HBA in economics from Wilfrid Laurier University and an MBA from the Rotman School of Management. Welcome, Rick and Kathy. Uh, just at the beginning, I'd like to honor and acknowledge that the offices of eCampus Ontario are located on the traditional territories of many First Nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabe, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis. I recognize and am grateful for the legacy of all past, present, and future generations of the First Peoples of this land. I'm joining you today from Fort Francis, Ontario, which is situated in the traditional territories of the Anishinaabe and the Métis people, where it is my great privilege to live, work, and learn. In this virtual space, we are all convening from different places, and this is one of the things that makes the online environment special. I invite you to share your own land acknowledgement in our chat. So to provide a little bit of context before we get started, adaptive learning platforms are educational technologies that assess a learner's knowledge, identify skills gaps, and provide a personalized instructional path towards learning outcomes. Overlapping adaptive learning are other technologies such as artificial intelligence, machine learning, and intelligent tutoring systems. Often experiential in nature, these technologies are grounded in competency-based instruction and move the learner towards mastery through ongoing practice and immediate feedback. Among the many benefits of adaptive learning, these technologies have been shown to improve learning efficiency, knowledge transfer, and learner engagement. eCampus Ontario has been working in the adaptive learning space for the past several years, where we see these technologies as an important and emerging part of the digital transformation of higher education. You can see details about our work by visiting our adaptive learning webpage, uh, which is being posted in the chat, um, and, and, as well. 
For the remainder of today's webinar, we will hear about a collaboration between Conestoga College, Fanshawe College, and Amitros Learning, where the Amitros Experiential Learning Platform has been integrated into a variety of courses. At this point, we're going to turn the presentation over to Rick and Kathy to share some details about their work and the innovative technology behind it. So I'm going to stop sharing and over to you, Kathy and Rick. Excellent. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm Kathy. Thank you so much for that uh, amazing introduction. Um, I'm just sharing my screen here, getting to our presentation. Bear with me for one second, and then we'll kick things off. So thumbs up, Rick. Everybody seeing my screen okay? We're good. Excellent. Well, thank you so much again, Dawn, for the, the, the warm welcome. Thank you so much to eCampus for hosting this webinar and for all of you for taking the time out of your very, very busy schedules to be here today with us. Thank you very much. We're very grateful. I'm going to kick things off um, in this webinar and provide you with a brief introduction to Amitros Learning, who we are, what we do, how it works. I'm then gonna turn over the reins to, to Rick and he'll talk to you about his experience in implementing an Amitros module into his courses. And then we're gonna come back to me and I'm gonna provide you with a demonstration of the product that Rick has integrated into his courses. And then we're gonna open it up for, for questions and discussion. So that's the plan. Hopefully that works for everybody. And, uh, we will jump in and, and go from here. So a little bit about Amitros Learning. First off, what do we do? Don, whoops, Don mentioned this. We're, we're an ed tech company or a learning technology company, and we provide a platform for communication-based virtual experiential learning and assessment. Our vision as an organization is to transform the way we teach and learn by providing an equitable, meaning accessible, a measurable and supportive environment that helps learners transition their knowledge into practical skills. In September of 2021, Amitros launched our third generation of experiential learning platforms. So we've been doing this for six years and have iterated on the technology three times. We refer to this platform now as Amitros 3.0. The platform, this most recent version of the platform inc incorporated some very flexible state-of-the-art design principles that improved the user experience and flow, drove deeper learner engagement, and provided enhanced and more accurate assessment, empowering instructors and administrators with a flexible, scalable online teaching tool. On this platform, we design and develop both custom and ready to run or off the shelf experience-based learning modules for both the academic and corporate learning markets. Our modules support the development of essential skills, skills like communication, critical thinking, problem solving, leadership, and emotional intelligence. Here's how it works. In each experiential learning module, learners take on a role and assignment within a fictitious company. To complete their assignment, they're required to interact via text-based simulated email or text-based instant messaging with AI-powered clients, coworkers, supervisors, and other characters. Each interaction with an AI-powered character is designed to measure the learner's ability to demonstrate knowledge and skills. Depending upon how successfully the learner communicates and demonstrates the required skills, the character replies with different responses, tones, and attitudes, providing learners with feedback that mirrors real life experience. The platform also assesses competency and delivers real time individualized feedback and adaptive content at the moment of learning. Through authentic interaction, interactions, feedback, and iteration, learners gain concrete experience and a carefully designed narrative that works towards the resolution of a problem or project. To date, Amitros has designed and developed more than 200 experiential learning modules for approximately 47,000 learners. Some of our Ontario-based clients include Toronto Metropolitan University, Carleton University, University of Waterloo, Brock University, Mohawk College, Algonquin College, Conestoga College, Fanshawe College, Pearson Canada, and Havergal College. So with that, that's my intro to Amitros. I'm gonna turn it over to Rick 
And Rick, you just have to tell me when you want me to move on to the next slide and I will drive for you. Okay, yep, head to, head to the next slide, please. So um, I just want to, you know, take a second to, you know, um, you know, try to come down from my emotional high of this introduction that I, I apparently was self-aggrandized with. Um, and uh, also thank both Kathy and Don for the opportunity to kind of give an educator's perspective on why I think experiential learning and adaptive learning platforms really are the future of education. So when we, when we think about what education is from a traditional standpoint, we have students, we have them for a certain period of time, we we teach them, we assess them, and then we cross our fingers and hope they go out and become the, you know, the leaders of the future that we hope that they're going to become. Um, in my experience as a corporate trainer, we had a little bit more time and a little bit more accountability to the people we were training. So we, we really try to add an element of application. So can you actually use what it is that you're learning? And in our college, you know, um, course outlines, we, we, we have that same promise to industry. We give things like vocational learning outcomes and essential employability skills, all these things that we are promising to, to our customers, our end users of our students, um, that they'll be able to perform. So when we when I had the opportunity to come over to the college and I've, at the college level, I've been doing this now for about five years, um, there was a real opportunity I felt to try to bring that application piece in fact, I have goals for every course I teach. And the, the biggest goal is the students not being so worried about the grades they get and the pressure that they have for exams and traditional assessments, but can they use the skills they learn three months from now, five months from now, five years from now, 10 years from now? Will they still be able to resonate and use experiential learning techniques to be able to help them navigate their career paths. And that's really what you see in the screen here, that we have these traditional assessments we tend to use. And these traditional assessments do a really good job with our students telling us what they've learned. But what about application? How do we do application? Well, in the corporate world, if anybody here has ever gone to a retreat or uh, even a daily session, we tend to do breakouts and, you know, uh, role plays and everybody rolls their eyes and goes, oh, you know, everything was fun up until now. I have to be on the stage. Well, that's a little bit more difficult to do post, you know, teaching a course. How do you get to know if students are going to be able to apply it? So uh, there was a, a bit of an opportunity from a previous course I took that actually added a simulated learning module. So when I had an opportunity to start doing curriculum development for courses, um, there, there, there really became this sense of engagement of how I could bring that experiential learning into the classroom. And that's when I got to meet Kathy through a series of reaching out to many companies, looking at different things about what is going to make an effective company. And Kathy, do you want to go to the next slide? Um, Amitros really kind of stood out because the one thing that that we have as teachers is we have a certain amount of time and resources available to us to do things like implement new technologies and new new styles and, and whatnot. So when I was looking to add an, an, uh, basically a, an experiential learning uh, platform to a course, um, Amitros really made a good um, partner for a lot of reasons right? That it allowed us to bring these experiential elements into the course, that there was a real world scenario that we could virtually role play without the eye rolling, if it was. In other words, it was a different way for students to be able to, to, to learn and to see things based upon, you know, not just traditional textbook learning or, you know, whatever it is that we do as, as educators to try to, to engage our students. So this virtual role play scenarios that, that, that Amitros offered um, allowed the students to, to practice the skills that align to the theory that we teach in our courses. And this became really important because lo and behold, they liked it. There was no eye rolling. There was a lot of um, ability for the students to be able to engage quickly, for me as a professor to add the content easily. And just to, to plug Amitros here, the support is phenomenal. You're dealing with a company that is you know, very much, not just reactive, but proactive to needs. So um, as you know, not just a facilitator, as a curriculum developer, it became a very easy company to deal with. Next slide, please, Kathy. And that's really what 
I'm going to finish up with here is that the Amitros platform that Kathy's about to show you is super easy to use. It's not just easy to use from a perspective of the student, but also as the facilitator or the professor as well. In fact, we have a few online professors today who are joining us here who are actually using it. And they can probably attest to the ease of use as well as, uh, and go ahead and shout it out in the chat window, those of you who are here, um, as well as you know the support that Amitros gives you. So the other thing that's important is that as we move into um, a world of OERs, these open educational resources, and, and being concerned about you know, things like cost affordability to students and whatnot, Amitros is also a very cost-effective company. So the value that you get on, on, on the product that is delivered is you know, really, really, um, you know, uh, compared to, you know, traditional text learnings and whatnot, a fraction of the cost. So the students also, although even though there's an incremental cost to Amitros, don't balk at the fact that, you know, there's an additional to it. And you'll find also, I found at least as well, dealing with the administrators within Fanshawe um, and more specifically at Conestoga, that this is the, the kind of uh, open um, uh, OER type of resource that we are looking. So it's not quite an OER, um, but it's absolutely working towards understanding the, the, um, the affordability to the students. Far more important to either of those things is the adaptability um, of you to be able to both within Amitros and within your, your curriculum um, align your course outcomes. Um, so this is where, you know, um, I've had an opportunity to work with Amitros and, and do things like, you know, um, bring assessments into the Amitros platform and run things by Amitros to talk to them about, you know, whether or not we can align the course outcomes a little bit more directly with the individual modules. Um, specifically with the new platform that Kathy was talking about, it's easier than ever to be able to, to work with the team at Amitros to make sure that your course, and, you know, I teach leaders leadership and management style courses through Mitros, but they have more programs than that. And, and I found that the, uh, the adaptivity of the platform makes it, you know, uh, you know, as a, a, not only a facilitator, but a curriculum developer, um, a very easy program to, uh, or an easy company to work with. Students actually like it. So the feedback we get from the students is it's different. It's, it's allows us to do things in a different way. It allows them to practice in a safe space. You can have both graded and non-graded assessment with feedback built into Amitros. So if you're looking to get students to be able to practice concepts before doing assignments, as an example, that's, a, that's available um, for the student. And really what they're doing is very similar to what other industries use simulators for, is they're, they're gaining skills actual transferable CV related skills that they can, you know, actually go and say, yeah, I've practiced being a manager in Canada. I've practiced, you know, being, you know, a leader and using leadership concepts. And these things are real because the feedback they get is real. The assessment they get is real. It mirrors and parallels things like performance um, appraisals in a workplace um, through, you know, people of authority and power over them, us professors. So it really does start to get them to learn about what they're going to be doing in their post-secondary education, and not just post-secondary education, but their work world after post-secondary education. And uh, so, yeah, that's that's really the the catalyst for for not only experiential learning as being an important future resource, but why a matrix as well. Back to you, Kathy. Thank you. I, 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 you couldn't have a better test. I didn't pay him a dime. I'm telling you, <laughs> like that, that was just genuine and sincere. And thank you so much, Rick. You're, you're, you're such a great partner. And so he's really an amazing, amazing teacher as well. So, so I'm going to take this back and just actually, I'm going to speak about the, the narrative of this module that, that Rick runs in his courses. It's, it's on a subject called inclusive leadership and set up the, the sort of scenario that they find themselves in. And then I'm gonna shut down the PowerPoint and go over to the platform and actually show you uh, a demonstration of the platform. So, uh, so the scenario, I'll just read this out. Um, the learner takes on the role of a, of a team leader, a new manager basically for a, a diverse group of, of individuals. They're the customer care team at a company called Redwood. And Redwood is a successful online retailer, think Amazon. 
Um, the team that the learner is taking on has experienced, they're, they're in a bit of a difficult situation. They've been through three different leaders in the past 18 months and all of them with really different leadership styles. And, and the sort of inconsistency and instability has really uh, contributed to poor team dynamics. And there's a lot of problems within the team. And in addition to sort of the, the, the problems, the, the team is not performing as well. So the learner comes into this narrative and is tasked with, with turning this around. So to succeed, they're gonna to need to build a culture of openness on their team by effectively applying the traits and behaviors of inclusive leadership. So with that, I'll pause and my slideshow and jump over to the platform. So thumbs up if everybody's seeing my screen that says inclusive leadership. Excellent. So, so just a, a little bit of setup. Some of this is repetition to what, what Rick had said, but um, obviously the purpose of this, this module on inclusive leadership is to introduce learners to the traits and behaviors of, of inclusive leadership. Um, the skills that they will experience and be assessed on throughout this module include things like creating a safe environment, creating opportunities to contribute, building relationships, emotional intelligence, supporting others. They'll learn um, about displaying humility, demonstrating vulnerability, and demonstrating pro-diversity beliefs. It takes a learner on average about an hour um, to maybe two hours, depends on the learner themselves, to go through this experience. They're delivered async on demand, so um, they can, they can you know, go through them at their leisure. The instructors have the ability to gate them along the way, so learners can't go past a certain point. Maybe they want to bring some discussion into the classroom around that, so they're very flexible in how they can be deployed, but total learning time is about an hour, an hour and a half, two hours. It depends if there is uh, the optional integrated uh, um, instructor graded assignment that can be embedded into this experience as well. So what you're seeing here is what a learner sees logging into the platform. I'm actually demonstrating this with an administrative view so I can jump around and move around. Um, but the, the learner experience is, is a little more controlled and fluid. So they start off with uh, an introductory video um, and, and this is outside of the narrative, but it's more meant to introduce them and let them get acquainted with the platform and understand the context of what they're going to be placed around. It's an important video. It walks through the learning objectives and outcomes. It introduces them to one of the AI characters who plays a crucial role in this experience. Um, we always uh, have a character who is who takes on the role of an AI-powered mentor or coach, and in this case, um, it's a woman, her name is Ava Russo, and she leads and guides the, the learner through the experience. This video talks about navigation, how to move through the, the experience, and also how the AI works. So it's, I'm gonna play a little bit of it, just so you see what the students hear when, when they're starting in to an Avitros experience. Welcome to the Inclusive Leadership Experiential Learning Module. This experience will provide you with several opportunities to hone your leadership skills. You will walk away with suggestions and best practices on how to establish yourself as an inclusive leader, including how to build relationships within your team and create opportunities for everyone to contribute. Your mentor throughout this module will be Ava Russo, the Regional Director of Quality Assurance and your new direct supervisor. She will offer advice and suggestions as she guides you through this experience. In order to complete your tasks, you will need to interact with natural language-based artificially intelligent characters. Characters will respond to your messages immediately, but at times you may receive an out of office reply from a character who is unsure of how to respond. If this happens, please be patient as the AI is still learning. As you progress through the experience, you will need to complete a series of learning objects. You will see a list of these learning objects on the left side of the page, which you can use to navigate between them. To get started, click the Start Module button in the bottom right corner of the screen. The module is designed to present situations that challenge you on the skills required to complete your tasks effectively. 
The platform will analyze and assess your messages to characters for key knowledge and skills. This assessment will drive character responses and provide a competency rating in the form of a debrief after key interactions and activities. Please be sure that all messages you send. I'm going to pause it there. Um, so that gives you a sense of, of how they're set up to, to move in. We're going to click the module and move into the experience. So this, this, this uh, experience on uh, inclusive leadership is 17. Uh, learning objects, 18 if the optional instructor graded uh, assignment is included in it, and the learner works their way through this sequentially. So what I'm going to do for the sake of time is I'm going to walk you through in detail these first uh, six learning objects, which takes us to the very first interaction. I'm going to show you the work of a learner who didn't do such a good job and the feedback that they got, and then I'm going to reset this and I'm going to put in a different response with a learner who does a better job of, of completing this interaction and showing you how the AI responds and how their assessment is actually changed. And then I'll give you a quick highlight of the rest of the, the experience. So, so this first learning object is a video message from Ava. She essentially explains to them the company, the situation at the company, the role that they're taking on, the stuff that was in the slides. So we're not going to talk about that. The learner watches the video and clicks next. I'm going to drive navigation from over here just because it's easier. They then are presented with a video on, uh, on how to act as a leader and create an inclusive environment on your team. This, uh, this, this module and all of our modules, we collaborate with subject matter experts. This particular module, we worked with an expert in inclusive leadership. Her name is Dr. Angela Workman-Stark. She's a former uh, senior executive with the RCMP and, and then turned educator and actually traveled the world pre-COVID educating police forces all over the world on inclusive leadership. She's now an associate professor in the Faculty of Business at Athabasca University. Um, and, and she's really good on this subject. So this is a four minute video that they would watch. I'm not gonna play it for you, sets up the learning, they then move into learning object three where they receive a message from Ava. This reiterates what was in the video in terms of what's the team problem. There's been three managers in 18 months, really gets into some more details here about what's happening on the team. So there's, it's, it's obviously a difficult situation. Some people are, are sort of um, um, getting more time and contributing more and, and it's there's people who are resenting this and obviously it's driving performance. Their task is to unify the team. And again, here's how she starts guiding the learner. I think your best course of action is to put together an introductory email. And uh, oh, and by the way, I'm going to give you some background on your team members. So uh, this will help you in dealing with this stuff. So they read this message, they click next. Here's the team bios. This is a downloadable PDF that introduces the team. There's a lot of relevant information about the five team members, Tom, Keo, Rao, and uh, Rita, and Mike. Um, and, and the learner needs to you know, read this stuff closely. There's clues in here as to behaviors that are gonna be demonstrated later. And it's important and part of the context of the narrative. So then they jump into the next learning object. We've got another theoretical video here that they watch on the art of being vulnerable. And then they go into their very first inter inter interaction where they're tasked with introducing themselves to the team. So all of this has been to set them up for this particular interaction. This is an example of, uh, so this is a completed interaction and this is a learner who didn't do quite a good job on this. And I'll show you why in a second. This, uh, these are instructions here, compose an email. It's basically self-addressed to the team and this would have been blank, but I've already input a learner response. The learner is Katie, by the way, Katie Demo, that's me. And our learner who didn't do quite a great job, actually, I think she did a good job of introducing herself to the team. She um, gave some, um, some background information, sort of credibility of her experience of working in the industry. She made it personal. I like when I'm not at work, I like to canoe and have a dog named Bo. Uh, but then she kind of left it open-ended. I'd like to learn more about you, your goals at the company and your interests. Please drop by my office. So they 
type in this space, there's a button here that they hit send, and then they instantly get a reply. And in this case, Mike, one of the team members replies back and just nicely says, you know, I want to welcome you here to the team. You know, it's great to have such a capable individual. Uh, sincerely, Mike. They scroll down in this and they're able to here see the actual competency assessment that they got on that interaction. So we were looking for three skills for them to demonstrate three skills in this interaction, building relationships, emotional intelligence, and creating a safe environment. They did a good job in building relationships. They established their credibility. They made it personal and delivered or received a mastery level of assessment on that skills. The details of how the assessment is done is in these little eye icons to the left. Um, emotional intelligence and, and creating a safe environment were skills that were lacking in this particular learner message. So, and they're given feedback that helps them understand. So it's, it's emotional intelligence in the context of this narrative. And essentially we're saying, this refers to the ability to address the issues impacting the team. A team leader should have clearly identified the issue. We've got a problem here. I'm here to help get this thing sorted. And we serve them up some adaptive content that they can reference back again that would talk about this particular skill. At the same time, we were looking for them to um, create a, a safe environment and, and here the importance of that is highlighted. And, and even you know, some options for how they might do that. Consider highlighting your openness towards creating dialogue. So in the student version of this, um, at this point, beside the next button, they actually over here see a button that says, try again. This is an optional feature that can be turned on at an implementation level, but it's a great way for the students to actually take this feedback, review this adaptive content and retry that interaction. Um, I'm going to actually just move over here and, and reset the interaction and then show you what happens when a learner does a different job with this. So now you'll actually see what the, the actual interaction experience is like. I need to restart the module, go down to learning object six. I'm oh, sorry, learning object six. And you can see this is blank. So you don't want to watch me type. I have a, a good learner response that I'm just going to cut and paste into this. Um, and, and here's our learner, Katie, doing a little bit better job. So maybe she decided to retry that interaction to try it again. She took the feedback and, uh, and introduces herself, but more importantly, calls out the issue. There's an un unspoken degree of tension. You know, we don't want the team dynamic. We need to work together to create uh, an environment that promotes trust and safety. And uh, I'll be working with you in my new position. Thanks and have a wonderful day. So the learner types in here, they click the send button. Mike replies. Um, this is less about um, authentic, you know, the, the reply. He does acknowledge, you know, this idea of sharing ideas. So he's responding differently than he did in the first one. And when they click on feedback, they're getting uh, obviously a different level of feedback. They did a good job on all of these skills, building relationships, emotional intelligence, and creating a safe place. So this is an example of that application of knowledge and that practice and that ability down here in a student view to retry that I think creates and supports all of what Rick talked about. Um, just, I'm not going to go through the rest of the experience, but I'll just highlight it for you. This is, this is one of six interactions that the learner will go through. And basically they, um, they, um, they have to, they have to, somebody responds to this message and tells them more, more details about the problems. They have to deal with that. Then Ava comes back and says, I think we should have a team meeting. There's obviously some things that need to be worked through here. Why don't you send a note to everybody inviting them to a team meeting, which the learner does and is assessed on. A character comes back and says, I don't want to go to this meeting. I never go to these meetings. I'm not comfortable. So now the learner has to work to create, that's Tom. They have to create a safe environment. There's lots of theory that comes in here, the importance of safety. They have to get Tom involved. Um, some more messages on power of humility, and it ends, it, it accumulates in the end in learning object 16, where they go into a, um, it's a summative exercise, and it's done in the form of, of a 
of a text-based chat with, with Ava and the team. And the learner um, has to apply and practice all that they know in sort of a team dynamic meeting and all sorts of different challenges are presented. People who are unhappy don't feel that they contribute. The meetings start at nine in the morning. I'm still dropping my kids off at daycare and they have to deal with all of this stuff. In the end, they do a self-reflection, three questions that are asked to them just to get sort of a subjective outcome. How did they feel when they dealt with this difficult situation? What advice would they share with somebody else? But that's the sense, hopefully, of what this is. I want to leave time for questions and comments, but very happy to, uh, uh, you know, support anybody in a more detailed demonstration or, you know, quite frankly, like Rick said, I'll give you the chance to, to try it out yourself. So I'll stop there and stop my share and see if we have any questions. Or Rick, do you have a comment or anything you'd want to add to what I just presented? Yeah, just, just quickly, while people are probably formulating some questions, the um, the again, the educator's perspective, the curriculum developer's perspective in that is, as you can see, that content gets added. You get to actually kind of introduce the different learning outcomes through your course material. So if you're if you're introducing the concepts of emotional intelligence as an example, you know you can introduce them and then they get to practice them, right? So this is where the the alignment to the um, to the to the course outline and your your learning outcomes outcomes relate to practicing those things. So, you know, and it can be very practical things. Um, uh, Kathy talked about introducing a team meeting. So I've built an assessment that gets them to actually um, uh, submit an assignment about you know, creating an, an agenda for a meeting and how they can use inclusive concepts in a very traditionally, um, you know, process oriented document. So there's lots of different ways that you can use work within the framework, like the optional um, uh, graded resource, as well as add content that relates to their experiences. But the best part is the practice, right? Um, and that ability to kind of reset and be able to try again in a safe environment. And I often say to uh, to my students, we don't we don't let airline pilots, you know, practice by flying really heavy metal birds over our heads, right? They they practice in in safe simulations. And this is the same way; they're allowed to make mistakes and learn from those mistakes in a safe environment. Whereas in the real world, as a leader or a manager, if you make a mistake you might be held accountable to that performance. So um, it's a, you know, uh, thanks again, Kathy, for the uh, the the demonstration, because I think it really brings home a couple of things. One, the the effective use of these these experiential learning outcomes um, and, and platforms, but even more importantly, it's crazy easy to use, like it really is. And uh, you're not spending your time as a facilitator teaching your students what to do. You're spending your time discussing the outcomes, which is pretty exciting. Yes, that was absolutely fantastic. Thank you. Um, so uh, certainly anyone has questions, you're free to pop them in the chat or uh, uh, raise your hand and uh, we'll try to capture you and we can let you open your mic. Um, while we're waiting there, I'm, I, I'm just curious, um, and uh, Kathy, uh, Rick, with is there so obviously that you each they complete each module and their their competencies assessed and they obviously have the chance to repeat it until they feel they've reached uh, wherever they want to be as the learner do you as the instructor have the ability to prevent them from advancing until they've reached the competency level that you have kind of set at the outset so that you make sure they've got a good grasp on the on the content prior to moving into more advanced concepts yeah, I'll talk and then Rick can talk about how he runs it. So the platform has the ability to gate learners at a learning object level. So if Rick is running this, you know, over several weeks in his course, and he doesn't want anybody to get past that first interaction, learning object six, he has the ability through an administrative portal or the instructor portal to, to set a date, you know, gate. Nobody can move forward past learning object six until this date. So if he's having an in-class discussion about that. So all the gating, and it's optional, it's completely optional and, and any instructor can set it up anyway. So this is how it aligns with the course. And, and I think that's really facilitates what Rick does is let's, let's talk about the things that we're talking about in class relevant to where you are in this experience. But that doesn't mean it also can't be offered in, in a straight async on demand, you know, think continuing ed more environment. 
where this is just the experiential layer at the back end of a course and people can just go at their own pace. I get through the whole thing in a day or I wanna do it over six days, it doesn't matter. Yeah, there's an entire uh, instructor platform, you know, kind of dashboard piece that um, you actually have some control over. So in some cases, you may choose to assess students on their feedback. We do that at Fanshawe as an example. So they wouldn't have the opportunity to reset the platform and do it again. So the professors can kind of control that and work with uh, Amitros with what you want your, your, your platform to kind of look like. And again, um, it, it, you're never on your own. Um, every single professor that I've added to the course content or has been added gets training from Amitros. There's a, a great support team where you know I can start giving you names of people as well in the background that that do a really good job making sure you're not by yourself as well. Yeah, excellent. Uh, I see uh, Monica has her hand up. Monica, go ahead and uh, ask your question. Yeah. Sure. Uh, firstly, thank you, Kathy and Rick. I think this has been so amazing, and I, the, the best thing that I liked was it as you just kept reiterating that it is very simple and it's very intuitive. So thank you for that. I had a question about the feedback. Uh, let's say I'm a learner and I attempt the question the first time and I get a feedback, which was great that it leads me to the particular uh, resource. But I was also wondering that, is that feedback, does it also tell me in terms of, uh, well, you know, this is the learning objective or these are the other resources that would help me to improve my response for the next time? Is there something like, can I relate it to the learning objective level? Uh, you know, when I get the feedback, the, the AI generated feedback, does it also kind of lead me to say that, you know, this is the learning objective or, you know, maybe these are the other resources that probably Rick has provided apart from just that video. Does it kind of give me that kind of feedback? So I think in general, the feedback is designed to come back to the learning object. So if we're if okay. one of the things that they're trying to do, and, and that's the skill level too. This is about, you know, um, creating an environment for everybody to contribute. If, okay. if that's what's being assessed, then they're gonna, they're gonna be, it's gonna link back to why that's important and how they might have done that. That's I went through the feedback pretty quickly, but that's what it's meant to do. In terms of pointing it to other um, supporting content. I mean, that's that's the flexibility in the programming. Often, you know, interactions don't have adaptive content, but but if there, you know, is something or there's something incremental, it's it's relatively easy because it's very modular to add to what we're seeing here. Um, so I, I'm not sure if that answers your question entirely. Or Rick, there's a part two there. Well, and quickly just on that too, yeah. that that's also your ability as the the creator of the content. This is not mm -hmm. the course. This is just an you know, yes. a supplement to your course. Yes. So in things like the assessment. So if you're talking about using inclusive concepts, moving things like I versus you language to we and us language, you build that into your assessment and then your assessment then gives them graded feedback, which in all honesty, Monica is probably going to catch their attention a lot more than free feedback, right? So yeah. um, so you, 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 you realize as you're building content with the platform, the more you get used to it and the more conversations you have with the metros, how you can build those applications yeah into the course content exactly. not just as an adjunct but as a exactly. partnership exactly yeah, that, yeah that's what i was trying to understand how does it build and because this is just helping to support the learning objectives that you would have created for Correct. so i was like how does this kind of build in and says okay this is what it has not achieved but you know there is more to it and then you can kind of go back yeah. to those resources that are helping you uh, achieve the learning objective so and we tend to introduce these into, you know, very kind of um, formulaic courses, like, you know, okay. things that are built on the fundamentals of things like organizational behavior or, you know, contemporary leadership and management practices. So there is the theory that supports this as well, right? So when you're talking about inclusive leadership, you know, we, we speak an awful lot about like people like Burns and transformational leadership and the characteristics of transformational leadership. So you can tie the course theory to what they see as an interaction as well and get them mm -hmm. to do that in the assignment. So in many of the assignments, it's kind of like, okay, now that you've seen inclusive leadership and we've discussed the difference between traditional and inclusive leadership, how can you take what you You've learned in the course and apply that to your opinions right so um so and we'll we'll funnel them at that point we'll say you know go to module 
five go to the slide and you know and, and talk about the four characteristics of transformational leadership and why is this inclusive so you can build that into your assessments as well and bridge them and then in the final assessment they do in the one course at Conestoga we bring that reflection back so as they're reflecting on now their leadership journey they actually have to think about how they practice what they now value in Amitros so how does that relate to what they've learned in the course as well so there's an awful lot there that you know we don't we I, I you know Amitros is a tool for us as instructors to be able to, you know, reinforce what we teach in the course. It's not a, not to replace us in any way, shape or form. Yeah. No, I, I think, I, I, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I think Rick, you just brought in a very valid point, which is saying that if as facilitators, as faculty, we're talking about adaptive learning, there is going to be a software tool that's going to help, but it's a lot to do with thinking about adaptation and adaptive at the curriculum level. Like when you're designing the course, you need to design it in such a way that it is getting personalized. And then there is a software like Amitros, which could help you with that. So well, and, that. and Jordan uh -huh. in the chat window kind of just reiterated to that too. So how much of your time does it take around this process? So I think there's a bit of a, uh, you know, a, uh, 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 horse before the cart, cart before the horse kind of attitude we take, right? So we build curriculum or have existing curriculum, and then we go to search for things that fit within the parameters of that curriculum. And you won't find anything that's 100% match. So there is some tweaking that gets involved there. And this is speaking about that to you as well, Jordan, in the chat window. Um, the That, you know, you, there is a bit of give and take that if you're looking to add this to existing curriculum, there's a little bit of work with massaging where you want the content. So it may mean moving module three that a, you've always taught in module mm -hmm. three to a module five yes. as an example those types of things but um the, i think the easiest step to do if you're interested in this at all and i'm going to plug you here kathy is just basically reach out to kathy and say what do you got and can i play with it and and i think you'll find the answer is yes right and then the more you know we can talk about how easy it is but yeah. you won't know how easy it is until you've actually done it yourself and i think, um, I think the other important thing rick is is it's an evolution Right. Um, so, so most instructors will will take the module as is and 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 run it as a you know a, a four grade assignment um, or you know not just sort of completion based an exercise for the class to do and 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 really kind of be hands off of it and 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 get feedback from in that first term that it runs. I mean, obviously they're familiar with it, but then you start seeing what Rick is seeing like now you know, this is great. They really like it. They're enjoying it. It's engaging. I can get more out of this. You know, we used to talk about X and now I'm going to change X to Y because it relates back to this particular scenario. And then we're actually, you know, running it with the integrated um, instructor uh, assignment, which isn't assessed by the platform, but it's part of the platform. And it's really simple you get notified when the student submits something, you click, 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 and then all of a sudden you're gating it. And there's four points in your course where you're actually talking about it and bringing the learning back and adding supplemental you know, information or content to support those discussions. So it becomes a journey, yeah. or that's been our experience yeah. with how it is implemented. And it works across different modules too, or different platforms. So at Conestoga, it's an asynchronous course. There's currently nine professors teaching this in one course and everything is fed into the modules, including screenshots and whatnot. So it, you know, yeah, you can walk your students through it face-to-face -face, or they simply can read in an announcement or in a module instruction. So it's, it's um, you know, it's a self-contained enough that it's uh, a very easy process either way. Thank you so much for the response. Thank Excellent. You, Thank you for the question and the discussion that came from it. Um, oh, we do have another follow up question here from Jordan in the chat. And uh, do the assessments and or platform identity man uh, identify management integrated with the LMS? So, do so I think what you're asking is, will the grade books align with one another? And the answer to that right now is no. So there is a, a bit of a, have a one screen open, another screen, if you are doing assessments within. Um, I, again, you can build assessments outside of that, put them in your own grade books, and then just and then um, do them from there. So there they will add a mutual. So what we didn't see in, um, in the uh, inclusive leadership is there's a final task where they actually have to do a coaching dialogue with one associate that they've identified, and they have to use processes we learned 
thrown in the course. So this means that um, in that particular case, they'll build a rubric for you. They'll do everything in Ametros. You are just simply taking that grade and then inputting it manually into your grade book, at least for now. I, I'd like to jump on that question just about integration because we're different with everybody that we worked with. So it's a, it's a learning tool and we support learning tool interoperability. So our, our platform supports um, LTI 1.3, which means you know, working with your IT departments, we're able to integrate this into a course, a course shell for to support single sign-on. So you know, the user experiences whenever they get to this, this part of the their course, they click into it and they're in it and they're registered into it. We do uh, support LTI final grade integration as well. I don't think we've done that, Rick, with, with no, these newer implementations, yeah. but we can, if there is an overall assessment or an assessment from that graded component, so the students get, you know, eight out of 10, we can actually integrate that back into um, an LTI 1.3 supported gradebook, or even if it's just done at completion and we just want to track that people have actually finished this, we can also send that back. It's just IT work. So, and we do have LTI set up at Conestoga with SSO, right? So yeah, yeah, the students are not using, yeah, they're not using external links to try to get into the platform or anything. You'll have like to that. do your back end and submit your yep. final grade. So that's, that's, uh, depending on, depending on how your institution does um, a model shell setup as well, you, you may have to get, uh, depending on who you are, may have to get involved at that level of being able to program to that level. It's not that difficult, but um, some, some have designated uh, resources for that, others don't. So, um, I think we have, I'll, I just got one last question myself and perhaps you can, and then some insight and then we'll wrap things up. But on the, the data end of things that comes out of this, so the learner interactions and the, the, the analytics that, that can potentially come from this. And uh, are you able, uh, you know, Rick, as, a, as an instructor to really look at kind of your learner performance across the cohort and identify common areas where maybe the way you're instructing in class may need to be tweaked because the learners aren't quite grasping it as quickly and how how easy is it to access that data and interpret it? So the dashboard, again, that you see, you'll you'll actually have access to student progress, all of that kind of thing, right? So there's a couple of things that you want to make sure as a, an instructor that you're paying attention to. One is completion rates. Are students actually, especially in an asynchronous course, completing the information? But second is, you know, what are they learning, right? So um, we don't want it to just be an experience that they're they're learning the incorrect things. So um, that's where, again, for me, it's building the assessments that I have graded outside um, and how they relate to both Amitros and to the course. The, the Amitros support piece of that is every semester I have a debrief with Amitros. What did we do well? What could we do better? Those types of things, right? So, um, and, you know, solicitation of, of information from other professors who teach. So there's there's kind of a quantitative and qualitative approach we take to this, Don. So yeah, quantitatively, we can look to see, you know, student progression and performance. Are they doing better than they were at the beginning towards the end? And that's easy to assess. And then B, you know, qualitatively, um, you know, what did they enjoy about it? Where, where do they go with it? Um, what can Amitros do to improve the, sim the, the simulation in the next iteration? How can we change where we introduce the simulation? All sorts of different reflective exercises I take as the as the um, owner of content development in the courses that I that I use this in. So, um, so I guess the, the quick answer is yes and no. There's, there's, you know, when it comes to metrics, it can be a little bit difficult to, to kind of assess. But if you go back to student grading, you can see progress in students who are engaged. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Uh, so that brings us to the end of our one hour together. That goes pretty quick. So I'd like to thank uh, Rick and Kathy for taking us uh, through this uh, very interesting program and great insights. Uh, thank you to you, our audience. I hope that you've gained some insights into how adaptive learning might be useful in your uh, context um, as well. And thank you to the eCampus Ontario communications team. They do a lot of behind the scenes work to make uh, these webinars possible. Uh, if you'd like to find out more about our work in adaptive learning or to connect on work you might be doing in adaptive learning, please visit our webpage. Today's webinar is the second in a series of three being offered in October.
October and November. Join us November 2nd when we will hear from Mohawk College and Affinity Learning. Please register through our website for this great learning opportunity. The recording from our first webinar on October 5th is available through our YouTube channel and our Adaptive Learning webpage. I encourage everyone to explore the eCampus Ontario website for our various programs and services, including the Ontario Extend program, micro-credentials, CAPFO, the Open Library, and the Ontario Exchange uh, programs, and more. A special note is the peer review opportunities through the Open Library. Participants can contribute to the continuous improvement of OER as a subject matter expert by providing constructive feedback on resources in the Open Library. This opportunity provides some compensation and, more importantly, involves Ontario educators in the inclusive creation and improvement of resources for our sector. For more information, check out the Integrating OER Program link that's being posted in the chat. And finally, save the date for our upcoming Technology and Education Seminar and Showcase. This is eCampus Ontario's flagship event, uh, where this year's theme is the Hybrid Learning Experience, Designing the Future of Learning. TEST 2022 is an in-person event with virtual elements to enhance social connectivity and will be held at the Toronto Globe and Mail Centre on November 15th and 16th. Tickets are limited and available at the website posted in the chat. For more details uh, or more details on our services, tests and access to the recording from today's presentation uh, will be sent out to uh, all registrants of the webinar. And as a special item as well, you'll, we'll be included a link uh, that you can connect with Kathy and actually uh, test this out either in the winter or the fall semester in 2023. So you actually can have a free trial of this stuff and may find ways to integrate it in your curriculum. So thank you all for attending. Have a great day and please enjoy the rest of your week. Bye for now.